This is lesson 2.3. We'll be exploring function notation in this lesson. Our objectives are to write functions using function notation. They are also to understand how to use function notation to represent a function and its dependent variable, as well as using function notation to evaluate a function. Let's look at function notation first. Um, so traditionally, functions are referred to by the letter name f. Oftentimes now you guys have just been exposed to Y. Um, although F is not the only letter that we use in function names, as you know, like I just said, you've been exposed to Y. But here are some other ways that we write functions. You can say F of X, G of X, H of A, A of T. Those are all different ways to write the name of a function. And that is in place of the letter Y. Here are some examples below using function notation. So in place of y in this first one, we have f of x. It still means y. There's no mathematical um, equation that we're doing here. f of x is just another name for y. We also have a g of x, an h of a, and our, and our a of t. And there's an infinite number of ways that we can write functions. The f of x notation can be thought of as another way of representing the y value, especially when you're graphing. This is very useful for that as well as for evaluating. So the y-axis is even labeled as the f of x axis when you graph. Okay, um, so this inner variable inside the parentheses is always our dependent variable. That's the variable that we'll have on the x-axis. Now it makes sense for it to say x as in these first two, but sometimes we'll be talking about something in particular like time or you know, per hour or something like that. So instead of X, we might use a T in here or we might use an H in here. Okay, as in this last one, maybe that's time or, or something like that. Okay, so for basically, if you look at this, Y equals X squared plus seven, it's the same thing as F of X equals X squared plus seven. If you see an X in here, that means the equation is gonna be in terms of X. That means that X is what we are using to represent our independent variable, our variable on the x-axis. All right, so as I mentioned before, it's very useful for graphing to know what our independent variable it looks like, but we also use it for evaluating functions. It's like a shortcut. So to evaluate a function, simply replace, in other words, substitute, the function's variable with the indicated number or expression. Example one. A function is represented by f of x equals 2x plus 5. What this says, find f of 3, means find what this equation equals if we substitute a 3 in for x. So, to find f of 3, replace the x value with 3. So, I'm putting it in here, this f of 3 right here. However, I'm not doing anything mathematically with that. That's just information. What it says is I'm evaluating my function when x is 3. Notice that I put it in here then in place of the x. So in place of x, I now have put in a 3. So I would just go ahead and solve it. 2 times 3 is 6, right? Plus 5. And as you can see, that equals 11, what they just said. But notice I'm not doing anything here because that is the same as y. Okay, oftentimes students make mistakes and they think, oh, I need to get rid of this three, but there is no mathematical operation going here. That is just the same thing as y. So in other words, what our equation is here, and I'll write it down, is the same thing as if I said, here's our equation, y equals 2x plus five, find what y equals if x is three. Okay, no difference. Let's look at a few more examples just to become familiar with this. So here we have example one, a function is represented by f of x equals six x minus five. If it's easier for you to think of this as y, then go ahead and think of this as y. So the way to evaluate it, remember, is we're plugging in two for x. So it's proper notation to put it here as our y, meaning we're evaluating the function when x is two. So what I would do is I would plug a two in for my x, and then I would go ahead and solve it. So what I end up with is 12, six times two is 12, minus five, and I would get seven is my answer. 
Okay, no different than what you've already been doing. We're just using function notation to represent what we're doing. All right, let's try another example. So in this one, it says a function is represented by f of x equals 3x plus 7. Find f of negative 4. So again, now you can see that we need to put in a negative 4 in place of our x's. So we have 3 times negative 4 plus 7. And that is the only operation that I'm doing in here. This, again, is just informational. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 7. And that equals negative 5. And that's my answer. So, so basically, in my function, what is the value of my function when x is negative 4? And that would be negative 5. Let's look at this last example here. In this last example, it's a little bit more complicated because we have um, a squared term. So you just have to be careful about your math. But it's really no different. So we want to find the function value when x is 2. Okay, so we're just going to plug a 2 in for our x. So we would have, and again, be very careful. Sometimes it helps to use parentheses. So we are going to plug a 2 in for x and square it plus, 5 times 2 minus 12. Okay, remember your order of operations. We aren't going to do negative 3 times 2 because multiplication does not come before our exponents. So what we need to do is negative 3 times 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, plus 5 times 2, we can do that now because we've cleared our exponents. So plus 10 minus 12. Now let's go back to the beginning. So what we have here is negative 3 times 4, which is negative 12, plus 10, minus 12. Okay, I'm just about done here. So all I need to do is add and subtract. So be careful of your signs. Negative 12 plus 10, that means we subtract, and we end up with negative 2 minus 12 and negative 2 minus 12 is the same thing as negative 2 plus a negative 12, which is negative 14. Okay, so very familiar to you guys. It should be since you have done much of this evaluating. It's really just the notation of the y that's different. All right, let's try our last set of examples. And then you can try some on your own. Okay, so example four, a function is represented by g of x equals 3b. Oops, that should say x, actually. So we want to make sure, and this is a good example of what we should find. So we will not have 3b here because it says that our independent variable is x. So what this should say is 3x, okay? Because whatever you find here is what is going to be inside your problem. The problem will be in terms of that variable. So now it's saying find f of 9. Remember, that's find the function value when x is 9. So we'll do it just like we did the other ones. So our function in this case now is g, but it's no different than when we had f. So we're going to find g of 9. So that would be 3 times 9. So our function g, when x is 9, is going to be 27. 3 times 9 is 27. Okay, in our final example, evaluate this function, h of x equals h squared plus 9, when x is negative 3. That's what that one is saying. And again, we don't have an f here, but that's okay, because sometimes we graph multiple functions, and every time we add a function to our graph, we may have a different variable name for it. So instead of f of x, we might have h of x, or g of x, as in the top. So writing this out, we have h of negative 3 is equal to, and again, do your parentheses because we are squaring the entire negative 3, not just the 3, plus 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. When you add the other 9 to it, we get 18. Okay, so be careful of your exponents. We had a review with that earlier. All right, and that concludes our lesson on function notation.